So in this segment, we're going to talk about the media store channels. These are internal to the switcher and allow you to load stills and animations from the USB into the media cache. There's four channels in total, media one, two, three, and four. And media one and three will act as a pair for files that have a video and an alpha. And channel two and four will act as a pair for files that have a video and an alpha. So when I look at something that has a video and an alpha, like here we have our, our media store, it will use the same linear key properties so I can use this for keying and other elements as well for simple bugs and small animations. It is a media store so you can also play back audio. In the still store or media store, if the file name has an associated .wav file, it will loop those together. So let's go ahead and look over here and as an example. So I have my USB plugged in. I'm using the web browser to look at the media manager. And I can click on USB. I can see my subfolders. So if I go into the capture directories, I see the files which I've captured. Um, I can simply grab these and drag and drop onto a channel and it'll automatically load that into the channel for me. So I can see these stills. On the left hand side, you have your properties tab. So when you highlight one of these elements, it will load down here and give you the properties, like the media number assignment you want to give it and where it's located. On the right hand side is your channels and you can collapse them for channels you don't want to see. Uh, you can drag them into a different order if you don't want them in the same order, hide things you don't want to see. You can also create playlists inside of the media store channels. So I could take these files, drag them into the playlist, and these are the order in which they're going to play out. I can create new playlists, I can just move everything, or I can even save these playlists. And these playlists will store to the switcher itself, so I'll always have them available to me. So if I was to load a previous playlist, there I would see it, or I can come back and I can load mine, go ahead and load it, so it automatically brings it back. You have your controls to be able to step through it, and it'll load them into RAM cache. So it's always good to step through my playlist the first time before my production so that I'm able to have all of these things pre-cached. And now I can jump around inside of this playlist and it'll load these elements for me into the media store channels automatically. And you can build separate playlists for separate channels. When you select something that, for example, is an animation, here what you'll see is that the item has a key channel, meaning it has an alpha. It shows a movie icon on top of it because there's more than one frame. And then finally an audio icon because there's associated audio. A media item, like an animation in this case, uh, is either a target sequence or a PNG sequence. So it's a sequence of images, it'll be the name of the file, underscore, and then the digits. So like here it's 000 is the first frame and then it automatically groups and associates the additional frames after that. What you would do is you would select the channel that you want to load it to so that it's highlighted. You click on the item you want and you click Q. And now it's going to load these items into the media store channel. It automatically associated the audio with it which would be in this case iceviz.wave and this would be a uh, wave file 48 kilohertz, uncompressed, up to 16 channels of audio. The other thing that's nice is you can load just audio. So if I create a wave file with an audio track, I can play that back from inside of the media store without having to use external devices. And again, with my custom controls, making it very easy to call up even audio files and audio playlists. Once you've loaded the animation in, you get to set its properties. So the animation is now loaded and I can see that I could say, well, whenever it goes on air, I want it to autoplay. I could make sure that I set that it's shaped keying. In the case of this file, I know that I generated it as a pre-multiplicative pre key or an additive key. 
So I want to turn on the shape keying to make sure that it will perform an additive key type. Then you have all of your parameters below. If this was just a small bug or a small animation and it wasn't full screen, I could set my X and Y position so it'll always load to that same place. And you can define what the cut frame is. Now the cut frame comes in handy because we're going to talk about using the media stores to do something called a media wipe. So when I load this, I don't know what frame is the cut frame. You'll see some of these other ones I've already preloaded and I did already assign their cut frame to where it is to perform the transition. When I go to dashboard, I'll see that when I select media wipe, the menu will change. And all I have to do to create my shop box is enter the media ID. So whatever it was last entered as, and it'll show up in that little shop box. So there's my new animation that I just loaded in. And when I select it, it automatically loads it into preview and I can see it. Now, what I want to be able to do is set where the transition takes place. So if I hold down media, it'll take over in preview and now I'm doing a transition in preview so I can preview it. I'm able to move my media wipe to the position where I want the transition to take place and while holding down media, press the cut button. This will now set that frame as my transition frame. So when I auto trans, it will perform that cut underneath and as you could hear, the audio also plays along. So with media wipes, it makes it very easy to select my media transition. I see it loaded. And what's nice is because it's not on air, we actually load that cut frame as the preview frame. So I can see that I have my carbonite wipe loaded. I select the source that I want to transition to. And now I hit the auto trans. So as you can see, it's very easy to use the media stores for not only stills and animations, but also for your transition types. And when you get really into it, you can now use it to also be your audio effects engine.